What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you are listening to the podcast, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today we are just going to jump right into the reaction because I spent the last week in Texas. We got back Tuesday, went to work yesterday, and then kind of crashed out afterwards. And uh, this morning I am up before work to film this video for you so it can go out to members on Friday and be posted publicly on Saturday. So there's a video this week. Let's go ahead and do win for the week, and then we will quite literally jump right into the reaction. Today we are reacting to Milena Ciciati's video called God is Recording Every Word We Say. Like I said last week, it's been a while since we've checked in with her, and so I looked through a few of the past like few videos that she's posted, and the one that we reacted to last week, and this one both caught my eye. The titles just like kind of grabbed me, and so... Um, I figured we would react to two of them in a row just because it's been a while since we've checked in on Milena. But if you were new around here, a win for the week is just where you share something positive that happened to you over the past week that you would consider a win, big or small, whatever it may be. If it made you grateful, if it brought you joy, if it made you smile, if it made you laugh, if you consider it a win, I want to hear about it and celebrate with you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, you can leave your win in the comment section down below. And if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you can leave it in the comment section over there. My win for the week is having a fun and safe trip to Texas and making it back safely. We had a great time when we were out while we were out there. It was nice to have a little bit of a break from work, see family, and then um, also take some time for just my husband and I to go explore and do some things, just the two of us. Um, that's probably going to be our last trip before the baby comes. And so we really tried to like pack a lot into it and it was a good time. So that is my win for the week. And like I said, I can't wait to hear yours and celebrate with you. Now let's get into the reaction. Good morning, sisters. What a joy and honor it is to have life this morning. You guys know I always do my voiceovers very early in the morning, so they actually end up being the first words out of my mouth. And so I'm thankful for waking up this morning. I'm thankful to have breath within my lungs, and I'm thankful for the ability to speak today. And the ability of speaking is exactly what I would really desire. So Melina just held her phone up to the screen and tried to show us something. I think it's probably the Bible app. That's what it looks like, but there's a really bad glare, and so I can't exactly tell what it is she's showing us, but I'm pretty sure it's Bible verses. Yeah, I have been going through the New Testament, and I was reading in Matthew, and there is something that Jesus says to his disciples, and it shook me to my core. I have probably read the book of Matthew 45 different times, and I don't think that I've ever really noticed this section, which is why I always implore and urge us to consistently be in God's Word, because in different seasons, in different trials, in different things, something might stick out to us that we would have completely swept through. And the Holy Spirit is always working on us. The Holy Spirit is always revealing things to us. So I was reading this in Matthew, and I, agree with that. I just started weeping, because it's a really scary thought. In Matthew, Jesus is talking to his disciples and even some of the Pharisees. Um, it's Matthew twelve thirty three. Neither make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You broad of vipers, how could you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I know that I've got, I know that I've gotten criticism for this before, and it's brood. I haven't even gotten to the verse yet, um, but she said, you brood of vipers. It's you brood of vipers. I understand that Milena is bilingual, and so I am not trying to be like, oh, wow, she messed up on her English. Let's point it out and, like, make it a big deal. But she moved to America when she was very little. She speaks English well. Like, this is not me poking fun at somebody who is still in the process of learning the language, you know? It's not like, oh, wow, you can't speak English. That's embarrassing, because I don't think that way, and that's not something that I would point out about anybody. Like, it's so hard to be bilingual, okay? 
I struggle with my second language, even though I literally went to college for it. Like I have a a certificate in deaf studies and a degree in interpreter preparation. All right. But Milena, you are reading a Bible verse right here. Like you brood, B-R-O-O-D, you brood of snakes or you brood of vipers, depending on your interpretation. It's the same thing that bothers me about Annie Elise and English isn't even her second language. I used to watch her videos. I, I was always kind of like iffy on her because of how she handled um, the like I, the Sophie Long situation. Essentially, like I thought that her handling of that was completely unprofessional and it made me feel kind of sketchy about her. But I was like, OK, she's kind of just getting started in the true crime space. Maybe she let her emotions get the best of her in how she handled that and how involved she got. She's been keeping her distance from cases and like just kind of reporting on what's publicly known now. Let me give her another listen. And after listening to a few episodes, you can tell that she is just reading off a script. And if she messes a word up, she does not care. <laughs> like she just keeps going, doesn't even correct herself. We'll just mispronounce something or read something wrong and keep it moving. And I'm like, this makes me feel like you're not paying attention or like you don't really care. And it's, that's a whole other thing. But like, that's kind of what this reminds me of. You're reading a Bible verse to us that you think is really important, but you're not like paying attention to the actual words in the verse. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Oh, I'm sorry. So he just said, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. By for by your words, you will be justified. And by your words you will be condemned. This shook me to my core. We are all going to stand before the throne and give an account for every careless word that we speak. Because he's saying, mm -hmm. by your words, you will be justified, but also by your words, you will be condemned. And that is a really, really scary statement here and really shows the weight that our words hold. And so sisters, I just want to urge us in a very practical sense to tame our tongues, bridle the tongue. We cannot word vomit. We cannot vent. We are not, there are what? so many things that the world said. You're not, you're not allowed to vent. Malena. That I, I, I feel like that's careless. I would hope that that was something careless that she just said that just came out of her mouth that she didn't mean. I fully understand and, and I'm on board with like being careful with the things that we say, being intentional and in how we speak, making sure that what we're saying isn't going to cause harm to somebody else and it isn't said with like hate and vitriol meant to hurt somebody, but venting is a totally normal, healthy thing to do. It, when you get frustrated, if you just pent everything up and you don't say anything and you just bury it down and bury it deeper and, and just sit on it, you're going to explode one day. No matter who you are, you can't just hold in your frustrations forever. And so being allowed to vent, being allowed to be like, today was rough. Here's what bothered me today is very important to be able to do. Of course, you don't want to be somebody who's like, always complaining or always like letting off steam, always having something wrong that they have to talk about. But it's important to be able to vent and get things off your chest. This is okay. And it's not. Speaking about another person is not okay. That is called gossip. Speaking badly about someone is slandering someone, whether that information is true That's or whether it's false. That is slander. That is not true. <laughs> Melina, by definition, slander literally means saying something false about somebody, like speaking something about someone else that is not true. If something's true, it can't be slander. Well, speaks highly against gossip and slander, malice, 
anger. And what he's saying here is that out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. Your heart, is your heart rotten? If we, if you had no. a camera following you around all day, what kind of stuff is coming out of your mouth? If you had to, let's say yesterday, if you had a cameraman secretly taking videos of you all day yesterday, and we all got to watch it today, because that's what the judgment day will be like. Let's say you had a cameraman following you on the day before, and you had your friends come over, and you got to sit down, and everyone had their popcorn and uh, candy ready, we're all sitting there, and we're like, all right, let's do it. We all sit down and watch the words that came out of your mouth that day. Did you speak life or did you speak death? There is no neutrality when it comes to our tongue. Either we are speaking blessings, we are speaking truth, we are speaking God's word, or we are speaking death, curses, evil, angry, um, unjustified words. Ephesians 5 says, Let there be no filthness nor foolish talk or crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Are you saying nasty jokes? Are you, um, is filth coming out of your mouth? Those, according to Paul, are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Let there be a heart of gratitude. And I say heart of gratitude because when you have a heart of gratitude, like Jesus says, it out it comes out in abundance of the heart and it comes out of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And it's interesting how Jesus starts the, his talk in Matthew 12, 33, talking about fruit and a tree having good fruit versus bad fruit. So if your friends are sitting there eating the popcorn, are they going to see the good fruit in your life or are they going to see the bad fruit in your life? Proverbs 15, 1 and 2 are probably one of my favorite Proverbs. Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft answer turns away a wrath and it shows the power, the sheer power that your tongue has. And I actually got to witness this in literal action a couple of weeks ago with someone that I was sharing the gospel with and they were Muslim and it was just absolutely crazy to me because every response that I had was gentle and kind and I would love to say that that's exactly what I wanted to do but my flesh did not want to do that but I asked the Holy Spirit like Lord I really need your help here this person is saying very rude, evil things. And I want this person to see the fruit in my life. I want this person to see the change that the Holy Spirit has like brought. What? How could I possibly preach the love of Jesus when I can't even express that in a self-controlled manner or even express love? And so there were many moments where I had to pause and I was like, Lord, I need you to speak through me. Like, Lord, I need you to help me bridle my... I'm trying to wait for like the rest of her story, but I'm just very confused on what that person being Muslim has to do with anything. Were you having a theological debate? Were they telling you that your your faith was wrong? Like, what what do you mean you were having a conversation with them and they were just so rude to you while you were trying to share the gospel? Did you approach them out of nowhere and be like, hey, hey, I noticed that you appear to be Muslim. Can I tell you about Jesus instead? Like, What's what's the context here? My tongue. Lord, I need to speak life. Lord, help me live out Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turns away a wrath. And by the grace of the Holy Spirit, every response that I had was soft and gentle and loving and had God's word. And God's word returns no void. And so um, within... I'm not even kidding. Within like 15 minutes of this conversation, this person completely flips and does a 180, starts apologizing time and time again. It was the absolute craziest thing. I've never in my life seen that Proverbs play into effect so deeply and so profoundly. And that's why God's word says it. But in Proverbs 15 too, it says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge richly. But the mouth of the fool pours forth foolishness. 
Proverbs 10. Okay, so the ending of that story does not make sense to me. I'm still confused about the context in which you engaged this person in conversation. Like, why why was it important to say that they were Muslim? That whole story just seems kind of iffy to me. I mean, I, I agree with the verse. It's like, make sure that you're in control of yourself. Check yourself. You're responsible for how you respond and how you engage in conversation. But the story that she used to illustrate that point uh, is suspect at best. And 18, whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wickedness is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but the fool dies for lack of wisdom. In this scenario, in every scenario actually, I would prefer to be the wise. I would like to be the wise one here. It says, the tongue of the righteous is choice, but he who restrains his lips is wise. We are called to restrain our lips. We are called to bridle the tongue. We cannot speak and say everything that we desire to say. You do not need to vent to your girlfriends about what your husband and children were doing last night. You don't need to speak about other people every time you are with other friends. If you want to see how if you want to see how shallow your relationships are with some of your friends, do not speak about anyone else during the time that you're with them. Is your conversation empty? Is there much to talk about? Do you have friendships where you solely only talk about others? Because if you do, those are not friendships. And those types of conversations, when Jesus says that those are the words that will condemn us. Colossians 4, 3, walk. I mean, I guess that's an interesting experiment to do is to see like how long you can go without talking about somebody else. But in all reality, I don't think I don't necessarily think talking about other people is bad depending on on what it is you're saying, because we are people who live in community with other people. And so if we're chatting about things that are going on in our lives, chances are they include those other people. And so they're going to come up when, when you're talking, like when you're in conversation with your friends. And if we're going to take that like literally, realistically, that means that Milena, you can't talk about the Bible. Unless you're talking about God, because God's technically not a person. You can't talk about Jesus because he's a person. You can't talk about Paul. You can't talk about Esther. You can't talk about Ruth. Like you can't, you can't talk about stories in the Bible because they involve people. And so when you're talking about them, you're talking about people. You talk about the Jezebel spirit. Well, that, that Jezebel spirit is named after an actual person named Jezebel in the Bible. And so when you're condemning the Jezebel spirit, you're technically talking about something that was based on another person. So are you talking about her when you are condemning the Jezebel spirit? Like, do we do we see how realistically that challenge plays out of like, oh, pretty much everything involves other people. And so, yes, in my opinion, I think it's important to be aware of the things that you're saying. Be aware of what's coming out of your mouth. Be intentional about the words that you speak. You know, for me, I would say like, don't don't intentionally cause harm to anyone with your words. Don't try to hurt somebody's feelings or be cruel and malicious. But to say like, you can't vent, you can't complain, you can't talk about other people, you can't gossip, whether you're saying something true or false, that's slander and you're going to be held accountable for it. I'm just not on the same page as you, Milena. In wisdom towards those who are outsiders, redeeming the time, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. James 1 19. So then my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Slow to speak. How different would our lives look like if we prayed before we spoke every single day? time. I guarantee when we sat down and ate some popcorn and ate some candy and watched your preview the next day, we would be 
oddly shocked to see how different your responses would be and answers would be if you prayed before you spoke. If you truly prayed before you spoke. I have talked about my friend Nava so many times. She's so filled with wisdom and it's such a joy to see how the Lord works in her. But there is a period of time where she fasted talking for 24 hours. How many of us need to do that? How many of us need to truly pause and not speak for 24 hours? I don't know that any of us have ever done that in our entire lives since maybe the age of one. I know that I haven't. Well, and why would we? Why would we, Milena? <laughs> like, she's like, I don't know if any of us have done that, just not spoken for 24 hours. Well, probably not, because how realistic is that to do? If you have a job, if you are a parent, if you are a caretaker, like, how realistic would it be to be like, I'm just not going to speak for 24 hours? That's like a, a weird privilege for Nava to have. And I don't know much about Nava. I don't know what her day-to-day -day looks like. I don't know what her responsibilities are. But yeah, that's a, that's a different level of, again, weird privilege to be able to just not speak for 24 hours. It would be a joy to do this fast, actually. But during this fast, she could not wait to tell her husband and children how much she loved them. And the true intention of this fast was to bridle the tongue and to be slow to speak. Because when you get mm -hmm. into this impulsion of always needing to state your opinion, to always say what is um, on your mind or what's on your heart, that is foolishness. According to God's word, that is foolishness. We do not need to speak every opinion that we have. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. How many times have our own tongues gotten us in so much trouble? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it eat its fruit. I've already said that one, Proverbs 18, 22. But it's so true. Proverbs 17, 27, whoever restrains his word has knowledge and he who, he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise, but when he chooses his lips, he is deemed intelligent. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only expressing his opinion. Proverbs 18, 2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only and expressing his opinion. Proverbs 18, 14. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a babbling brook. It is not good to be partial in the wicked or to deprive the righteous of justness. A fool's... It's not Proverbs 18, 14. Yeah, I just went back and I double checked to make sure I heard her right. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge deal that we don't know exactly what verse she's reading from, but... Um, I do try and like keep up with all of the verses that she reads off so I can read them with her. His lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a whisper are like delicious morals and they go down to the inner parts of the body. Morsels. Proverbs 14. I don't even know what verse she's reading from and I know that that's wrong. In 29. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts jolly. So if we couldn't tell. Okay, so I did some Googling and it looks like Milena is using the ESV interpretation, which is the English standard version um, of the Bible. And that verse says, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Not jolly. If you're going to read Bible verses, read them correctly. Like, actually look at the words that are on the screen or on your Bible. Look at the words that are written down and read them correctly because it's important. Like, you can't just say whatever. You can't just replace words in Bible verses. If you're reading anything, if you are quoting something, 
as part of your content creation, if you're quoting a book or a podcast or a quote that somebody said in a magazine, like you have to say what that person said or what is written. You can't just read whatever you want and swap out words. You can't just say morals instead of morsels. You can't say jolly instead of folly. That that means something different. And it's, it's confusing. Like the word jolly in that sentence doesn't make sense. It's confusing. And so if, especially if you were sitting here trying to educate other women on how to live their lives and the ideas that you think that they should have, you need to be intentional and make sure that you are reading the things that you are quoting correctly. All right now, God's word tells us to tame the tongue, be slow to speak, Yes. Not speak unless it's spoken with grace and great understanding. Speak in love. Put away anger, malice, wrath. We don't need to sit and gossip. We don't need to vent to our friends. We don't need to curse our children. And very practically speaking, oh, this is the difference between speaking life and speaking death. Speaking death over your children. Oh no, the children are too quiet. I bet they're getting into a bunch of mess and it's going to be a disaster upstairs. They probably and They are. never listen and they don't follow my <laughs> orders or my instruction. That is speaking death. Speaking life would be, oh, the children are rather quiet upstairs. I'm curious to see what they're doing. I bet they're following the instructions and doing as I had asked them to do. Speaking death. My husband is so annoying. He's always out of town. And whenever he comes back, he's so lazy. He does not help me. And... I'm always the one doing everything, speaking life. I'm so thankful that my husband has a job that provides for us and that he's out of town and is able to explore and see God's word and is given an opportunity to spread the gospel with other people. And I'm so thankful that he always comes back home to our children and family. And we are so excited and desire to see him. Were the words that you spoke and that we could witness together, are they going to be careless? Would you be justified by those words or would you be condemned by those words? And I think if we ask ourselves this question every single day, by the words coming out of my mouth today, will I be justified? Or by the words out of my mouth today, will I be condemned? It's a very scary one. It's a very scary one. We need to ask the Holy Spirit and we need to ask the Lord every single time before we speak, Lord, help me speak life. Lord, help me be slow to speak for a to an extent, like I agree with this. Is it realistic to be like, the kids are quiet. They are probably getting into something that they shouldn't be. Yeah. Like that's, that's more likely what's going on. If you got little kids and they're being quiet and, it, they're, and they're unusually quiet, it's like, I better go check on them because something might be up. But I do also think it's valuable to make sure that we are framing our thoughts in a way that isn't going to be, um, putting us in a constant state of negativity because I do understand like especially the one with um the example Melina used with the husband being out of town all the time it's like he's always gone he's never here I'm doing everything when he gets home he's lazy da, 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 da. like it's very easy to get into a complaint loop and just have a negative twist on everything if you don't check yourself and be like hold on is this thing true like this is how I'm feeling right now and this is the complaint that I want to make. But if I really think about it, is it true? Is it true that my husband never does anything? Is it true that he's always out of town? Right? Like, you know, being able to, like I said, check yourself and just kind of think about, is this realistically an accurate description of what's happening? Or am I just upset? Like, am I just in my feelings? And do I need to readjust? That's important. You know, you got to be able to temper yourself sometimes. A soft answer turns away a wrath. One of my favorite verses, and this is how I want to conclude the video. And okay. Paul is laying out the ways that a wife should submit to the husband and how this relationship should play out. And he says, do not be adorning by your outward appearance of the arranging of the hair wearing. Okay, so I'm going to assume that she originally said like, this is where I'm reading from this book, this chapter, this verse but she probably misspoke and then cut it out because she doesn't actually tell us what what chapter she's reading from or what verse she's reading. So um, I looked it up and she's reading 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 2. Gold and putting on fine apparel, but rather let it be the hidden person of the heart 
with uncorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. What is precious in the sight of the Lord? A gentle and quiet spirit. Do you have a gentle and quiet spirit? I certainly am working on this because I was not gentle, nor was I quiet. I had a very loud, obnoxiously loud, boastful voice that needed to say every opinion that I'd ever thought. And this is something that I've truly prayed every single day. Like, Lord, let my answers be gentle. Let my spirit be quiet. How beautiful would our generation look if we had more women who are willing to be gentle and quiet instead of boastful, saying every opinion they had and screaming everything that needed to be heard. Our Father hears and knows our desires. We can bring those to the feet of Jesus. You can speak all of these things that you feel. The Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. You can't be angry about a situation, but that does sure. not give you the right and justification to spiral out of control and word vomit all over everyone that's around you and speak death everywhere. The picture that comes to mind is like a dragon filled with fire that is just scorching everything around it because it simply cannot close its mouth. That's what I envision when women go out venting, when women go out slandering, with women just sit, uh, go on a spiral out of control speaking to their husband and to their children. Your f breath and the, the words coming out of your mouth are like fire scorching, killing every single thing around it. It's a very scary, scary illustration and it's a very scary thought and I can't even imagine how much it grieves the Lord to see his daughters speaking in such ways so my prayer is that we all walk into this week with a gentle and quiet spirit and I would be very prayerful to see if maybe you need to fast from speaking it doesn't have to be for a week even just 24 hours. And before you say, well, I, I can't, I, I have spoken that, no, yes, you can. If your pastor came over and was sitting at your house all day long, or picture someone that you deeply respect, if that person was with you and followed you all day long, I guarantee you, you could tame your tongue a whole lot easier with them around versus not. I guarantee you, there are certain things that you would withhold and be able to stop yourself from saying, surely because of the presence of a pastor or someone who you greatly respect is in your presence. Sure. Fine. Whatever. Going back to her saying that it's okay to be angry, but not to sin in your anger. Sure. Yep. I'm with you. I'm on board there, but it really, it does bother me that she's like making this a gendered issue, like making this a gendered thing of like women, how, how beautiful would it be if we tamed our tongues, women, because we weren't speaking in anger, because as the daughters of God, that grieves him. Like, is there something wrong with asking men to, like, control the things that they say to? Or is it just that you think that it's mostly women who watch your channel? I would assume it probably is mostly women who watch your channel, but... Um, just the, the phrasing and the way that it's such a focus on women needing to control their tongues and women needing to not be upset and not say negative things and not berate their husbands, you know, like all of the examples that she gave, it's off putting. And I think that if you're somebody who, um, is really looking to Milena for guidance and wisdom and instruction, you might hold yourself and other women in your life to a different standard than you hold the men to. And I think that that can lead to some unhealthy dynamics. Do we forget that the Holy Spirit and Jesus is in our presence at all times? Why is it that we can't do that with him here? We can control ourselves. We have the power to do that by the grace of the Holy Spirit. So let's utilize that. Let's speak life. Let's possibly fast and ask the Lord to give us this conviction of how truly powerful our tongue is. Lord, convict us of this. Help us see the death that we have been speaking and help us correct that to speak love and grace. In your name, Lord. Amen. Well, amen. All right. So that's the end of Melena's video. I would be very interested to hear 
what your thoughts are on this one. I mean, I'm always interested to hear different perspectives and to see what each of you take out of each video that we watch and react to, but especially with this one because I feel like Milena made some good points. Like there are some good principles in here. There's some solid ideas that she's bringing up and, and talking about in the video, but then I feel like she just kind of takes a bit of a left turn sometimes and I'm like, wait, no, don't go that way. Like we, we had a solid start, but we got off track somehow. So I'm definitely interested to hear what you have to say about this video in particular. Please feel free to let me know what you think about it and leave any comments and anything else you want to say in the comment section down below if you are watching this on YouTube or in the comment section for this particular episode if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify. And while you are doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel or leaving the podcast or rating any review, that would be incredible. If you have done any of those things already, thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you. And I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.